Hi, y'all. Um, so forgive my attire. Uh, you know, God just shows up in the most um awkward times sometimes. <laughs> you know, you go through the whole day and it's like I'm not, you know, that's good. Like I've had a great day in his presence, uh just interacting, seeing myself, learning all that he has had me learn humbled <laughs> god will humble you so i was um getting ready for bed so that's why i look like this and he he put a word on my heart that he wanted me to share with you all and i guess you would call this prophetic i don't really know because from what i understand that means i'm telling y'all something that's gonna happen that ain't happened yet but um i learned this and this is something that we are walking into i don't know if you noticed my posts that i post lately a lot of those posts are from last year a lot of those posts i posted last year and i repost them because last year god told me some things that we were going to be going through and i didn't know that i could hear from god like fully like i knew i had a connection i knew i had a relationship but like when you don't really trust um your self you don't fully trust god you know when you have areas of yourself that you lack in you you uh doubt god in those same areas and god has to build you so he had to build me in a more trusting uh place with myself to really believe that what he was saying was really true so a lot of stuff i post left from last year because it's actually what's happening this year that i actually said last year so i went through a phase this year um of now what i understand is gonna happen this year for y'all but last year for me so okay where you're at is a redemption to restoration process okay so you just came out of a place where you were uncertain and you were not you were worried about what was going to happen next and god had to bring you through this place to break you of your fear how many went through 2020 and thought that you were going to lose financially that your family was going to be a mess that you weren't going to have enough that how are we going to make it you had all these questions and god brought you through these things to show you that as long as you trust in him whatever you knew of him as long as you were faithful in it he was going to bring you through it so he should have been a relief you from the fear of who he was by allowing you to still go through the things that you had to go through that seemed like they were going to break you, but they did not. So no longer should you be afraid of what is in front of you. You can't be afraid of where you're going. You can't be afraid of what is going to happen because you see that even with nothing, God made a way. Even though we had all this turmoil in the world, he still allowed us to have provisions. He still allowed us to be taken care of. And it never got to a point where you just were without as long as you had the belief in christ the belief in god in your life in your heart he always made a way for you and you can attest to that because you're still here today so he wanted you to let go of the fear exactly the fear of not having certain people in your life the fear of a this person passed away. What are we going to do? You're still standing. You're still here. God released you of all the things that were standing in the way of him truly showing you that even with nobody and nothing, you were still going to have what he has called for you to have, whether it was just a roof, water, and clothing. Those were all the things you were promised in this world. And he took care of you because he takes care of even the birds and aren't you more important than a bird? So he has to first break us of our fear without with fear in our lives, we cannot truly trust God. You cannot trust what you fear. If you fear walking forward, because even though you say, I believe in God, but you have a fear of what's to come, then your belief does not produce a knowing. And God wants you to know that you can trust him no matter what the circumstance looks like, no matter what's in front of you, no matter what is happening right now. Do not put your faith in what you see. Walk by faith, not by sight. If you're walking by sight, you're not walking by faith. So when I say walk by faith that is the evidence of the things unseen that's what hasn't happened yet that's what you can't see you have to always have an image of my kingdom of my son of my promise of my victory of your overcoming of you out of this situation of you not where you're sitting if you keep looking at what you see you're going to be attacked or fearful of what's in front of you that's why peter started sinking when he was walking on water oh my god look at the waves look at the wind look at the water oh i'm going down but god was like ah put his hand out and i'm still here in front of you you just gotta keep focusing on me so in this season god was teaching us how to focus on him look at me look at me 
Stop looking at what you see. Stop looking at the coronavirus. Stop watching the news. Stop watching everything that's coming against you. I told you I, you were in this world. You weren't of this world. I told you I was God in this world, not God of this world. This isn't even your place. Of course, they're killing everybody. Of course, they have disease there. Of course, they have trials, tribulation, fires, floods, witches, warlocks. Of course, all that's there. It's the world. Stop paying attention to the world and pay attention to me. If you're watching what's in front of you, you're not walking in faith. You're not walking in faith. You're fearing what you see. So this was the season that God had to break you of your fear. He's going to do it again. He is going to repeat the same year for you over again. If you were walking in fear, it is a process for you to get to the place where you can walk in faith. But in order to walk in faith, you have to have total trust in God. Total trust does not mean that you believe every word in the Bible. Total trust does not believe that you believe that all the things that everybody tells you is true. It just means that you know that what you're seeing in front of you, there is better. There's more. There's far beyond that. This wasn't even a world that was given to us. So, of course, we have to stand in the face of the enemy fearless. If we have fear in our hearts, we are not walking towards the promise of God. We are walking in the op opposite direction towards the plan of evil. It's just natural. You're either walking in faith or you're walking in fear. You can't walk in both. You're either hot or you're cold. You get spit out if you're lukewarm. You got to stop being lukewarm and you have to pick a side. Walking in faith does not mean that you believe or that you know every word or that you think that everything that you do is right or that you're not sinning or that you're not doing things that God told you you were going to do inevitably because you're part of this world. It just means that no matter where I stand, no matter what comes against me, no matter what looks bigger than me, I know my God is bigger. My God is greater. My God is bigger than sin. My God is bigger than disease. My God is bigger than COVID-19. My God is bigger than the government. My God is bigger than Donald Trump. My God is bigger than financial loss. My God is bigger than everything that comes against me in this place place and as long as I trust that he will see me through I will overcome because I know that the greatest whoever did it was Jesus Christ and if he can overcome death I can overcome this world through him that's what you have to tell yourself in this time that even though it threatened to kill me it didn't kill me even though they passed away they left me something in my heart that's going to keep pushing me forward I have to make it in this season that is what God should have put in your heart in 2020 you have the power in you through the belief that you have in Jesus Christ to overcome anything, everything. You should walk fearlessly in this world. That devil has no power over the promise that Jesus ha has given you and over the fact that he died for sin and death, no matter what. That's number one. So if you are walking this year, if you're walking right now and you feel like you just overcame a lot of stuff, you have been, you have just overcome your fears. Be prepared to walk into a season of the same thing. Maybe it's a different face, same situation. God is testing us. God is testing us in this next part because if you can't get past your fear, you will never get to fully walking and understanding your faith in him. You can never truly say that you trust him if you can't overcome fear. Fear and faith can't live together. You can't be scared. You got to be fearless in this thing. We had disciples that went to jail, that were lost their heads, that had to go through so much because they professed the belief in Jesus Christ. Would you lose your head for Jesus? Are you going to jail for Jesus? You got to know whatever happens, if it's for Jesus and if it's in the name of Jesus, you can't fear what happens to you because God is going to be in between you and whatever that enemy is trying to do. Stay out of the way. Stay still. Be quiet. Be obedient. Do whatever you have to do. Carry out the desires of your heart, but place all of your plans in his presence and trust his word. He will never leave you or forsake you. There is nothing you can do that can separate you from his love. You got to take these words and know that they are true. That's for those people who have not been able to release their fear. And that's what God is doing you for you in this season. He's going to do it again. Be prepared to walk through the same year again. This is your year of redemption. You will walk out of the next year knowing how to trust. Because after you lose your fear, you walk into the ability to truly trust him. So this is where some of us are. We're in the place where we had to learn how to trust God, where now we have experienced going through the same things over again. We've experienced that same abuse, abusive relationship. We've experienced that same loss that we had in the past, maybe some bad um, situations that you thought you were over with came back to you, old relationships, old situations, maybe you have... Um, I don't know, repeats, repeats are starting to happen. You, you're starting to go down that path again that you thought you'd never go down again. And this is where God needs you to trust him. These are the people who have redeemed themselves through the faith and the belief, but they haven't truly learned to fully trust him that 
even in your sin, even in your backsliding, even in your relapse, even in your transgression, your regressing, he's still your God. He didn't leave you just because you made a mistake or a perceived misstep. He said, all things work together for those who love me and are called according to my purpose. Not just the things that are favorable to the people that tell you this is what the Bible says. This is what you can and can't do. To God, all things work together for those who love him and are called according to his purpose. Those who have accepted Jesus Christ in their heart and believe that he rose from the dead and is coming back. Oh, it's okay. A righteous man falls seven times. You're going to make mistakes. You're going to trip up. You're going to think that you had it all together and God's going to bring you right back to say you can do nothing apart from me. You got too prideful this season. You got too prideful to think that you were on top and you knew more than everybody else and you walked into it so confident to know that you had it and you didn't have it. You lost it. And instead of losing it in public, you stayed behind the, the scenes and pointed out everybody else losing it because you were walking your walk in vain. You were walking it to be seen. And now that God has put you in this place of full trust in him to show you that it wasn't your praying every single day two times three times a day it wasn't going to church every sunday because we could half, half the year we couldn't even go to church it wasn't those traditions and those rituals and those things that you thought were bringing you closer to me it was the fact that i chose you first and there is nothing that you are going to do that's going to make me unchoose you drop your pride stop feeling like there is something that you can do to get into heaven because it will never be by your works that you were chosen by god it is always by faith, by faith. Abraham walked by faith. Joseph walked by faith. Noah walked by faith. David walked by faith. All these people walked by faith because they were prior to the, the, the law that was given by Moses. And the law was given as a work, but it was because we needed to undo some things that had been done to us. He wanted you to know like a Job story, like Job sacrifice for his children he did all these things that were going to make him the most righteous man and still he lost his children he lost his farm he lost his wife he lost everything why because you cannot work your way into heaven you cannot use the principles and the rules in this book to make it seem like you're better than anyone because the word says that nobody will ever adhere perfectly to the law you have to know it will never be your perfection it will never be because you didn't sin because nobody's not a sinner the bible says if you say you don't sin you lie so what are we sitting here trying to figure out and trying to prove as soon as you fix one of your sins guess what there better be another one that comes up otherwise you make god a liar and god said we will never not be sinners as long as we were born into a world full of sin if we were we would be jesus christ and none of us are so this was the year that you were supposed to humble yourself you were supposed to stop walking as though you knew everything you were supposed to stop pointing fingers at everybody else and see those three fingers pointing back at you the father the son and the holy spirit we're telling you to start paying attention to yourself start looking at what you can do to change you look in the mirror and tell yourself the same truth you're telling somebody else you shouldn't do that neither should you god said you talking about all these people robbing you stealing from you taking from you not treating you right turning their backs on you treating you like you give them everything but they give you nothing back in return god said what do you think you're doing to me i'm showing you who you are on the outside of you i'm giving you people that reflect the way that i see you on the outside of you if it hurts you how much do you think it's hurting me humble yourself apologize pray for your brothers and sisters because in praying for them, you're praying for yourself. I need to, you to know that you can forgive. And when you forgive them, I promise you, I will forgive you too. This is the year that you walk into forgiveness. You walk into the redemption so that you can be restored. So you're either walking from fear into faith or faith into promise. That's what this year was. That's what this year was. It was either teaching you how to truly, fully trust God or allowing you to drop your fear so next year you can learn to truly, fully trust God because you're walking into a year of redemption. How do I know you're walking into a year of redemption? Because God gave me the gift of numbers a long time ago. So 2021, let me break this down. Two is going to be your number for Christ. Christ is going to be with you. Two is the number for division. So in this year, we are actually walking to a year that now has separated us. It's divided us. It has shown you the truth of who your government is, who your church is, who your family is, who your friends are, who's around you. You are walking into division. You will now get to make a choice of the people that you've seen. Who are you going to trust? What are you going to trust? Where are you going to trust? Learn from the steps that you make. Zero for the 2020 21 is going to be that empty place and we're all in that empty place that's the world the world this is the world so we have christ with the number two which is the vision walking next to us in the world and then on the other side of that zero which is the empty place is another number two and that means that's christ that is encompassing you so two and two is four as you know, 40 is like the number for the wilderness. They were there for 40 years. Well, four is not only the number for trouble, but it's the number for covenant. So two, 
and zero and two on the other side of the world. That is God in closing in on you to get to the one, which is God. God is going to turn this year around for you. He is going to make sure that in this year you receive his promise. And I will tell you this much, and it sounds harsh to say, but if you can't get it and you're not moving forward, you will be stuck where you're at until you recognize that the darkness in you is greater than the light that you are accepting. Let me tell you what God let me know. Oh, I'm sorry. Two, zero, two, one. So two plus two plus one is five. Five is the number for redemption. That's God's grace. This will be the year of grace for you. You will have grace through this year. You will be given mercy through this year. You will see the truth of who Jesus Christ is is in this year. And I promise you, this is going to be the year that's going to show you who you are. Last year was the year that could show you what you could endure. So from endurance to actually walking, God told me Jesus didn't just walk and die on that cross. Y'all didn't see him until he was 33. He was being prepared. We are being prepared to walk with Christ, to be able to stand up and choose him over everything. If you have, if you think that everything that you see in front of you is all you can get, you have not learned to walk by faith because this world is is nothing in comparison to what the kingdom of heaven is going to bring us. And if this is all you can see, and if you still fear dying and you still fear death, then you haven't fully accept Jesus. That's just an actuality because Jesus is, the, he died so that we can um, be redeemed of sin and death. We don't have to worry about those things. They can't stop us from living in the presence of God, sin or death. He died for that. So yeah, so ooh, I'm a little amped, right? Ooh, I went through, y'all, I'm telling you, I went through a year. God humbled the heck out of me. I have just, it, he does nothing for no reason. He makes no mistakes. When I tell you God gave me a word about 11, 12 years ago that my children would be restored and come back if I just continued to trust him. That's all he said. He didn't say, give me no title. He didn't say nothing. He said, just trust me. Y'all try trusting God through an addiction. Try trusting God through losing your children, through dating an, an uh, ex-con. Y'all try trusting God through losing and moving and, and trusting God just to sit today and see that nothing that he told me has not come to pass. Trust him. That's where that's our ultimate goal. You cannot possibly fully love what you can't fully trust. And most of us, by the way that we live, show that we do not fully trust God. We do not trust God the way that he would want us to trust him. So I had to learn how to be a parent through the way that God re-raised me in his word. And so now I know that the most important thing for my child is that I know that no matter what comes out of my mouth, she knows she can trust me because I've been there, because I've lived it, because I walked through it and I would never tell her something that is not true, that is not right and God said to me, if I told my son he was going to die and he was going to be with me, it was because he was so strengthened in me that he trusted that even death couldn't separate him from the truth that I told him. When Abraham went and was about to sacrifice his son he knew that even killing his own son wasn't going to separate him from me and so God needs that faith from you. He needs you to know that if you had nothing at all and you had him, you still had everything that you needed and that's something that I used to I asked myself, if I had nothing at all and I only had God, would I be okay? And today, I can honestly say that's all I want. I just left everything to come and find God because having everything was nothing to me if I didn't feel him, if I didn't feel his presence, if I couldn't hear his voice, if I didn't have his word, I don't care what I had. If I had God, I had nothing. And that's what God wants from us. He wants us to be able to say, I don't care if I have you in my life. If I don't have God having you, ain't nothing. I don't need to attach myself to anything if it's not the spirit of Christ. I don't care how what you think about my worship and praise. If my heart don't look like Christ, it don't matter what it looked like to you. He wants us to be able to choose him over all things in this world, even other believers, even church, even whatever it says. If they said to go right and God said go left, you need to go left, if, even if the whole crowd is going right. And you need to trust that that's okay. And it doesn't matter if somebody says this isn't what it looks like and this isn't what the Bible says. He said it's not about what you saw. And last I saw, we could see these words. He said it's about what you heard. So sometimes even what I read, the words that God speaks to my heart, they they take, they make me look deeper into some stuff that might not make sense on that page. But you better believe everything he says makes sense and all goes together. So I just wanted to come on because this um this process right now that he's bringing all of us through, it's going to start with you needing to lose your fear. You're going to have to lose the fear of losing people. He told me we were going into a season of mourning last year. I, I did videos on that saying God said it's time to mourn, it's time to mourn. And all of a sudden all these people started dying. We have to learn how to mourn and let go of what we love so that we can receive the glory that comes after loss. 
Jesus promised us a comforter. He promised us promised us the Holy Spirit. But we would have to mourn and allow the, the, the body of Christ to be laid to rest so that his truth and his spirit could come back to us. If we hold on, I'm going to say it like this, if we hold on to a lot of shame, guilt, um, unforgiveness, misunderstanding, we don't, we don't want to let go of even those that we love because we feel wronged in some way. Some of us are, st are really hurt by the fact that we can't have a physical connection with Jesus and we're still, we're still desiring that connection and we mourn that in our, in, in our spirits and we hold that belief that, that for some reason he, he needs to be here in order for us to receive him. No, we need to let go of that idea because he promised us a comforter. You need to allow Jesus to send you back the comforter to comfort you through this process that you're going to go through where you're going to have to go through some trials, some tribulations, some heartaches because in order to receive what he had, you have to live like he lived and you can't keep living like he's living holding on to him because that's as far as you'll go. You have to be able to get to that cross and what God told me is you cannot get off that cross by yourself. He will send you somebody to take you off. Jesus couldn't get off that cross by himself. He walked there by himself but somebody had had to take him down. Somebody had to lay him to rest. Somebody had to be there to pray with him, pray over him, allow him to sit in that darkness, trust who he was. God will send you somebody to take you off that cross. When you finally stop fighting this world, it's already been won. You just got to let go of the fear that there's anything you can do that's not going to allow you to get where God needs you to be. Some y'all just keep staying on that cross. Yeah, we died, but we got up again. We got we walked free for 40 days and then we went back to heaven. That's, that's the Christ in us, you know? And so I just wanted to come on and who he just, who Jesus, <laughs> I'm sorry. I just, I just love, <laughs> I'm in the shower. Like we're really God. Like, I don't really want to, I don't know. Should I really be saying this? But then I was reading, right? Uh, and, and it's Romans 15, but it says those who were never told of him, they will see him. And I believe it's like 18 through 21. And then it says, those who never heard him will understand. And, you know, I often say, I never grew up in church. Nobody ever told me about who Jesus was. I mean, I knew I was supposed to praise him and pray about him and all that. And nobody ever, you know, um, I didn't understand him. It was God. It was my relationship with God that allowed me to have this, this connection. Paul says in that chapter, he says, sometimes I wish that he, God would have just sent me to places where people don't know Jesus so that I can express it on a foundation that hadn't already been built. Because sometimes our, dis our um, understanding of what we've been told that we haven't actually seen we just want to believe